Hey everyone, let's talk about when to use commas. There are between seven and 10 different times when you should add a comma in your writing in English. Um, the number depends on who you ask or what textbook you are reading. So let's go through some. You should use a comma when you are combining compound sentences. You should also use a comma after the dependent clause in a complex sentence. We're going to add commas when we're separating items in a list of three or more. Add a comma after introductory words or phrases like transitions and time expressions. Add a comma between the day and year when you're writing out the date. If you are writing a US address, you're gonna add a comma between the city and the state. If you have a positives or non-restrictive clauses, you're going to add commas around the extra information in the sentence. And we also add commas before inserting direct quotations into our writing. So let's look at these a little more closely. I'll give you some examples here. When you're combining sentences into a compound sentence, you wanna make sure you're starting with a independent clause. That's also a simple sentence where you have your subject verb complete idea sandwich. A compound sentence is two of these put together with a comma and coordinating conjunction. Notice that the comma goes first and then your fanboys or your coordinating conjunction, then your second complete sentence. Okay, so let's go through a couple examples. Is this, san is this sentence a compound sentence? Does it need a comma before the coordinating conjunction? Today I ate a sandwich and I played outside. What do you think? Yes, we have two independent clauses on either side of that coordinating conjunction. So we have I, subject, ate, verb, a sandwich. Complete idea. On the other side of and, I have another subject, I, verb, played, outside, another complete idea. So I do need to add a comma before my coordinating conjunction. Let's look at another one. Yesterday, my mom and I walked my dog and went to the store. Does this one have two independent clauses? Does it need a comma? No, in this one, I have a subject, my mom and I, that's who or what I'm talking about. I have a verb, a walked. And I have an object, my dog. So I do have one complete independent clause there. On the other side of our coordinating conjunction, I have went to the store. There is no subject there. It is not an independent clause, so I do not need a comma here. Okay, the next time we use commas is after a dependent clause in a complex sentence. So we're still combining sentences here. But now we're working with a different kind. Again, we need to have at least one independent clause, at least one subject verb complete idea section. Then we need a dependent clause. This is going to have um, a subject and a verb, but it will not be a complete idea. We usually make these by taking an independent clause and adding a subordinating conjunction before it. So that complex sentence is a combination of an independent clause and a dependent clause. And those can go in either order. Independent clause first, then a dependent clause, or a dependent clause first, comma, independent clause. This sounds really complicated, so I'll show you an example. It's not as hard as it sounds. Let's look at this one. 
After I got home from work, I made dinner. Does this need a comma? Yes, we're starting with a dependent clause. After I got home from work is not a complete idea because it starts with that subordinating conjunction after. And now as a reader or as an audience, I wanna know what happened after you got home from work. I made dinner is an independent clause. It can stand alone. We've got a subject verb and a complete idea. So because I'm starting with a dependent clause, I need to add a comma in between. Let's look at another one. I need to graduate from college if I want to get a good job. I have a complex sentence here. I have two things I'm saying. Do I need a comma? No, in this complex sentence, I'm starting with my independent clause. I need to graduate from college. And my dependent clause is coming second. You do not need to put a comma before a subordinating conjunction. It only goes <clears throat> after that dependent clause. So you can kind of think about it like, you only need to add a comma if your main sentence is second. And this is a similar rule to the um, comma after introductory phrases. You can kind of think about it like that. Okay, another time, really common time when we use commas is to separate items in a list. Now, according to comma rules, a list is three or more items or three or more things. So let's look at an example. Um, these are actually things I need to do this week. I need to go to the grocery store. Um, I also need to pick up a prescription from the pharmacy, give my dog a bath, and I have to go to school this week. So I can put all of those together in one sentence as long as I don't repeat my subject. I'm also changing my verbs here. This is a list of things that I need to do. All of those items in the list can go with the I need to start of the sentence that I have here. So I need to go to the grocery store. That's my first item in the list. I need to pick up a prescription from the pharmacy. That's the second item in my list. I need to give my dog a bath and I need to go to school this week. So this is actually a list of four items, which is why they're all separated with commas. If you repeat your subject or the first part of your verb, you may need to combine sentences into a compound or a complex sentence. But if all of the items in your list go with the beginning of your sentence, you're okay to just separate them with commas. Okay, so I mentioned adding a comma after, introduc after introductory words or phrases, and this is similar to the comma after dependent clause rule. But in this instance, an introductory word or phrase is probably going to be a time expression, a transition word, <clears throat> or a transition phrase or clause. And those different transition or introductory words have different purposes, but all of them are going to go before your subject, before your independent clause in the sentence. Uh, University of North Carolina Chapel Hill's Writing Center Online is a great resource and they have this awesome chart full of transitional expressions or transition phrases and when you would use them. So if you want to show similarity, you would use some of those. All of these you can use in your sentence to combine ideas and add flow to your paragraphs. And the way that you do them is you start your sentence with one of these transition expressions, add a comma, and then continue on like you normally would. If you want to play a fun game, 
you can find all of the times when I have written sentences on the screen using an introductory word or phrase and added a comma after it. Another time we use commas is between the date and year when we're writing out a time. And you want to do it to separate the numbers. So if I say March 21st, 2020, I need a comma between those numbers. If I just say March 21st, I do not need a comma. That's between month and day, and the comma rule is between the day and year. So March 21st, comma, good. March 21st, no comma, only if I put the year and only in between the numbers. Kind of similarly, when you're writing out an address, a US address, you're gonna add a comma between the city and the state. So for example, you could say Imperial Valley College is located in Imperial, comma, California. Very nice. Um, and the Today Show has a nice envelope picture that I borrowed, so thank you to them. And you'll notice in their um, how to address an envelope photo, they have commas. So if we look up here, we have Sun City, which is a city, Arizona, which is a state, and a nice comma in between. Down in the main address, we have a similar pattern, right? So we have Anchorage, which is the city, Alaska, which is the state, and a nice comma in between. Look at that. The rule applies whether you are abbreviating the state or writing it out. Either way, you still need a comma to separate your city and your state when you are writing an address in the United States. Okay, ready for another one? Let's talk about commas around extra information in a sentence. This is pretty much the rule for a positives or a positives, which is that extra information to help the reader get all the information they need, but really it's extra. The sentence would make sense if you took it out. So here's an example. My dog Pearl likes to go for walks. Here's another one. St. Patrick's Day, which is on March 17th, is traditionally an Irish holiday. Both of these sentences have extra information set off by commas. In the first sentence, my dog, Pearl, likes to go for walks. The name of my dog is extra. If I just said my dog likes to go for walks, that's a beautiful sentence but I'm giving you extra information and I'm putting commas around it to show that it's extra. Let's look at the next one, the same thing is happening. I could just tell you that St. Patrick's Day is traditionally an Irish holiday, but I wanted to add extra information by adding the actual date in there. So I put commas around it to show that it is extra information. It's not essential. The sentence still makes sense and can stand alone without it. So we need commas. The rule to remember here is extra information, extra punctuation. So let's see if you can find the A positives or the extra information in these sentences. Here's the first one. I asked my neighbors, the retired couple from Florida, to bring in my mail. Now, does that sentence have any extra information? Yes. The retired couple is extra. You don't actually need to know that. And our next one, our professor, Mr. Alamut, drilled the lessons into our heads. Is that all essential information? It is not all essential. We have some extra there. So we need to put commas around Mr. Alamut because I could just say our professor drilled the lessons into our heads. But I wanna add some extra. I wanna tell you his name, even though I don't have to. So I'm gonna add those commas around it. 
And let's look at our last one. The meeting is at noon, unfortunately, which means I will be late for lunch. Is any of this information extra? Yes. Unfortunately, doesn't need to be there. I could just say the meeting is at noon, which means I'll be late for lunch. But I want to add something extra. I want to add that I'm kind of bummed about it, right? It's unfortunate, in my opinion. Okay, let's look at our last rule here. Before direct quotation. So we're going to add a comma before our quotation marks when we want to include someone else's direct quote in our writing. Here's an example. Mark Twain said it best, comma, when in doubt, tell the truth, period. <clears throat> I'm going to put my comma before my quotation right there. As a note, when you're starting, the comma goes before the quotation marks, but when you're ending, the punctuation goes inside the quotation marks. So you can always remember that your punctuation goes before your quotation marks. Here's a quick recap of the rules. We've talked about using commas to combine two independent clauses into a compound sentence. If you have two independent clauses on either side of your coordinating conjunction, you need to add a comma before. If you are writing a complex sentence and you start with a dependent clause, go ahead and add a comma after it. When you're separating items in a list of three or more and not changing or repeating your subject, you can separate those with a comma. If you have introductory words or phrases like transitions and time expressions, add a comma before you start your main independent clause. If you're writing out a date, go ahead and put a comma between the day and year. Remember it goes between the numbers, not between the month and day. When you're writing out an address in the United States, you're going to put a comma between the city and state. If you're adding in extra information, go ahead and add that extra punctuation by putting commas on either side of the extra part. And if you have any direct quotations in your writing, you need to put your punctuation before your quotation marks. So to begin your quote, you're going to say, according to whoever said it, comma, quote, say whatever they said, and then period, end quote. Next time you're doing some writing and you're not sure whether to add a comma or not, go ahead and refer back to this list. There's no need to say that it sounds good or not. We can make some informed writing decisions following actual comma rules. Happy writing, everyone! <laughs>